Hello Loveland, David Miller here and I'm at Gravelville this morning with Josh Torbeck. 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 <laughs> and Josh is the, the director of the Claremont County Park, Parks District. Correct. And uh, so Josh was gracious enough to come out and tell us a little bit about the property behind us. So I'll let you go ahead and explain that. But Josh, first can I ask you to tell us some of your background because I read some of that this morning. It's a pretty impressive uh, resume you have. Uh, well, I'm from the area, born and uh, raised on the west side of Hamilton County. Uh, before coming over to Claremont, I was with the Great Parks of Hamilton County. Uh, before that, I was director down in Delhi Township on the west side of Hamilton County. And uh, I was director of uh, City of Berea down in Kentucky. And then oh, really? I, I didn't read that one. And then I was a uh, park manager up in the Metro Parks of Butler County. So I've, I've been around the area, uh, a lot of great experiences. I've had a lot of great mentors. So uh, it's, it's served me well, but it's, it's, it's been mostly the fact that I've worked with some great people that I got here. So happy to be here. It's been a great uh, transition. Community's been awesome. So it's been exciting. All those jobs must be a tremendous amount of fun because people come to parks to have fun so I hope you are having fun uh, having a blast uh, I mean the reason and the reason most people get into this field is because they love the outdoors they love recreation uh, I personally love hiking and then uh, you know you spend all your your career working outside and loving it, and then one day you find yourself behind a desk so I got to remind myself to get out oh yeah get out a little yeah. bit more often so but uh, yeah it's, it's certainly a passion of mine well, um, so next, uh, tell us about the land behind us. Sure. And uh, it's owned by the Claremont County Park District. They hold the title, Correct. right? I didn't know if it was a state or, but it's a, it's a district. So tell us about how you got it, how big it is, kind of describe it, and so sure. forth. So it's a little over 100 acres. Uh, it used to be part of Grailville. Uh, they sold it to us uh, at a discounted rate because they wanted to see it remain uh, natural uh, and they wanted to, basically a steward to come in and take care of the land and, and preserve it the way it was and, and, and maybe uh, do some restoration. So we were a good partner for them. Uh, so the Grailville that most people are familiar with is kind of down in this area and sure. across the street. Uh, I think you said how many acres this was, but when when did this transition take place? Uh, a couple years ago before I got here, so Chris Klingman, uh, who's still on uh, with Claremont County uh, in a advisory role, he actually made the purchase uh, a couple years ago through Clean Ohio funds. So we got a grant through Clean Ohio. Uh, the Trust for Public Land helped kind of broker that deal with, uh, with the Grail, Clean Ohio, and Claremont County Parks. And essentially, uh, the district didn't really pay much at all uh, when it was all said and done. You know, a little administrative and yeah. fees and, and such. But at the end of the day, uh, through the kindness of the Grail and through Grant, we, we were able to get it for little or no money. Can, can you describe the, the land itself, the topography, and the, maybe some of the plants and animals sure. back here? Sure. So uh, the reason uh, you, you talked about the Grail, how it's kind of divided into two sections now. Uh, they're both over, uh, they're both each over 100 acres. Uh, the parcel that we have, I, I don't want to say is, is better, but <laughs> it, uh, it certainly attracted us uh, at Chris at the time, but uh, I would reiterate the fact that you got kind of a valley here. The topography is mostly flat, but if you can kind of see there's a, there's a ridge that kind of goes around the outside. So you have this beautiful open field with wildflowers uh, tracks a lot of birds, uh, a lot of native. There are some invasives in there that, you know, once we get on the property, we'll start taking care of. But uh, this will all remain passive. We'll put in a trail system, but other than that, uh, we'll do some restoration projects, maybe some tree planting, some prairie plantings. But we want this to remain a natural state where you can observe nature uh, and we'll, we'll give you some access with some, some trails. Uh, the trail system should be pretty decent in size, maybe about three miles. Oh wow, that's a lot. Yeah, so it, it, it'll be something people come out and take a walk uh, and, and get a good exercise or, or you know if they just want to observe nature. As far as what you'll see out here, I'm not a big birder, but there are a ton of birds out here. Um, you're gonna see, you know, your, your local map, you'll see deer and, and probably some fox, raccoons, squirrels, and things of that nature, but um, 
it's it's a beautiful piece of land and and we just kind of want to enhance it this is the area that was certified organic and i don't know if it still is but am i correct about that uh i know back i'm not totally sure what all parts of it were but yes at one point i believe it was yeah and um at, at one point someone that used to work at grail this has been a decade ago at least i told you this but um, the man wanted to have a folk festival out here and because of the uh, it was certified organic grail said no people might <laughs> spill coke on the property so they didn't do the festival so that's how well grailville took took care of this property uh, they took great care of it uh, you can take soil samples and the soil samples here are, are rich uh, as far as uh, migration this is a great uh, site for uh, birds migrating uh, this is a great location for them to to stop um, so it holds a lot of value uh, so we're excited about that we did get uh, a state capital grant to do a little development on the 48th side so we'll be putting in parking lot restrooms uh, natural play education area and then uh, we'll be putting in some what we're calling work study pods uh, that will be pretty interesting so uh, we're excited about the project. We're going to be doing something that's that's not really done around in this area before, so we're we're excited to kind of present that to the public. Yeah, well, uh, what a benefit to St. Columban School, and just right down the street is the uh, I can't I can't think of the name of it. The Montessori School. Yeah, Chil right children's next to the Grail. Yeah. Meet is it a children's meeting house? Am I getting that yeah. right? Yeah. So what? And they they've got all this acreage too, and I'm sure they've used this. But what a benefit! Uh, up on 48. So as far as I can tell, it's from like the St. Columban football field, the Bobcat football field. It goes down to the next house on the street. So if you're driving out of Loveland, it's on the left hand side. Yep. So starting at Bobcat Field, am I correct about that? So, yes and no. Uh, <laughs> part of that frontage is still owned by the Grail. Uh, ours, there's the, okay. the, the White oh, yeah. Pillars community. Right. So ours starts actually past that on this side of the road and then goes down to the curb uh, in 48. So, okay, right. A big, a big portion of that is what Drees wanted to buy. Because that was going to be one of the entrances up there, maybe the main entrance to the subdivision. If and Drees backed out of the deal recently when their zoning was turned down. Uh, what is the name of the park? We don't have a name yet, okay. uh, but it will be. It'll have Grailville in it. Either be Grailville Park or Grailville or Grail Park or Grail Preserve, but it it'll definitely commemorate uh, the Grailville. I mean, they they were so influential in this property. You know coming to us that yeah uh, we we want to honor that we want to honor the legacy so it doesn't have an official name but the word grail will be in there to honor them in, so, in yeah. some capacity i was wondering about that because it's sure an identifier sure. and people from actually all over the tri-state know where grailville is absolutely so especially people around here that might come drive five ten miles will know where where it is absolutely uh So, uh, in order to use the the Ohio funds, yep. there were deed restrictions that were required to be put on the property. Can you tell me a little bit about those? Sure. Uh, Clean Ohio essentially is, is put together to, to preserve land, to conserve land. So, with us using those funds to purchase this property, essentially we made a promise to conserve the land. Now, we are going to develop a small, about 10 acre uh, area on the front side on 48. Uh, and, and that will kind of limit what we can do. We can't put a sports complex here. We can't put a recreation center. But we can put some amenities, like I said, parking, restrooms, uh, shelters, nature observation, some uh, natural playscapes. Uh, but basically, uh, through that funding source, we're able to conserve the land and the beauty. And, and just keep the nature intact, which was, you know, the goal of the Grail and, and, and our mission. So it was a good fit for as, a, as far as a funding source. Okay. Um, is there any water, ponds, or anything on the property? So there is a small creek that dries up that runs to the property. 
on Grailville's property, there's several wetlands, small ponds on their side. And then on the 48 side, there is uh, a small like overflow stream and, and maybe little wet areas, but nothing I would say would be a significant wetland. Okay. Um, and I'm kind of going with questions that I know the public has been yeah, asking, sure. and I asked some people. I'm going to interview Josh. What? Yeah. What do you want to know? Yeah. Um, so here, here's a here's a big question though. So we'll see how you answer this because okay. I don't know if you're going to be able to or and all, <laughs> but but I guess there's uh, the 109 acres that the Grail had a contract. Sure. for Dries to buy that they were going to put 209 homes or something on it and that was when the uh, the rezoning was turned down and they weren't allowed to put that many homes on it and then uh, Dries backed out of the contract so we don't know if that's completely dead yet or they might be negotiating I know all this is not going to be told in public so I haven't even asked because I know but I'm going to ask you sure. is the park district pursuing buying the rest of it is that something you're thinking about or is it in progress uh so in all honesty uh w there's conversations being had about uh that potential idea but in all reality and it, it's something we probably uh at the end of the day just can't afford uh you know our our capital projects and our capital budget has kind of been laid out for the next four or five years. We're, we know where every dollar is going for the next four to five years uh, until the levy uh, comes up in two tw or 2026. Uh, so will, it, will it be a capital levy or no, operating? It's just there are operating, it was a 10 year operating levy that started in 2016. So it ends in 2026. Uh, but there's really nothing, you know, we're talking about a property that's valued at $70,000 an acre. We, we just don't have the funds uh, to do anything like that. And even if we could find uh, a grant to pay for part of it, we still don't really have the funding to make up the rest. Uh, you know, we've got other parks that we've, we've committed to, to doing some great projects that we're very excited about. And we'd hate to mortgage our future on one site, you know, at the expense of every other park. So we are having some conversations to see if there's a possibility. You know, we're, we're, we're having some conversations. but. In all reality, you know, we've, we've sat down and crunched the numbers, you know, probably 15, 20 times. And there's just, uh, unless somebody, you know, comes out of nowhere, you know, wants to do a private donation for this property. Uh, I've suggested that for a long time. Yeah. That there, there's enough wealthy people around Loveland and then they can get tax breaks on what they do. Sure. And but, but, you know, I, I think we're probably concentrating our efforts on... Hopefully, finding, you know, the the right neighbor or the right partner to go in next to us, and ultimately that's up to the Grail and in Grailville to decide who that is. But we, you know, we'd love to see somebody who's like-minded or parallel in thought, and then maybe we could team up and and share uh, some programming or education. Uh, you know, with, with the potential of trees going in there, we were working with trees, and they they were going to be a great partner as far as helping provide some things for us. So wh whoever the next person is, we're certainly interested in, in working with them and making sure that there's a good relationship there. Um, so, so we'll see. And I will, I will say to the Loveland leaders that um, this is a wonderful opportunity. <laughs> that if you pass this up, it's gonna be like somebody passed up Central Park in New York or, Cent or uh, Eden Park in Cincinnati. Um, generation after generation will Thank you for finding a way to purchase the rest of this property and join join it to this this piece we're talking about. It, it, well, it's, it's certainly unique. You know, it's it's beautiful. It's a lot of acreage. It's you know, stones throw away from downtown Loveland. So it's got a lot of things going for it. And but that's hence why you know it's yeah. it's valued so so much. Uh, and, and you know, it's it's just it's a it's a great piece to have. It's just finding that right. Uh, entity or organization or wh whoever it may be to to come in and and and, and make it something special too. So, um, Josh, I really appreciate you being so candid about that, and um, 
I got more of an answer than I thought I would because I know sometimes if you think about negotiating or something, you're just not going to talk. But I appreciate all that. And I know the, the people that watch this video are going to appreciate that. And I think it's some breaking news that, uh, that you have thought about it. It's still in your mind, 10 or 20 sessions where you talk about it. So I really appreciate that candid answer. Well, it, no problem. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the truth is, if we were in negotiations, it, it might have been less candid. Right. Uh, but the reality is, we, we are having some conversations. Uh, you, there's some residents in, in the city of Loveland that are passionate and uh, certainly want to see, you know, something special done with the property. And, and we're continuing to have conversations with them and, and some other entities to see if there is, you know, this, this magic solution. But, you know, I... I I just want to be honest so there's no rumors going around at, at this point. Right. That's, it's it's just not right. feasible uh, right. for us financially. So, And uh, I have to plant this in my brain because Loveland Magazine has compiled a little bit of history about Grailville and its past actually back from when, when women came to Loveland and settled here at the farm. And it was a farm then. Uh, I have to remember to put the links in this story about that so people can understand how important this is to people in Loveland and, and the heritage that it represents and so forth. Well, Josh, thank you so much yeah, for, for meeting me out here. Yeah. I really appreciate Anytime. it. Okay, keep in touch, will you? Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you.